In 1957, Adamski received a letter signed Oye Straith, purportedly from the U.S. State Department's Cultural Exchange Committee. According to the letter, the U.S. government was aware that Adamski had talked to extraterrestrials in a Californian desert in 1952, and that a group of high-ranking government officials were planning to make Adamski's story public. Adamski was proud of his endorsement and proudly displayed it to support his claims. Many critics and skeptics have investigated Adamski's claims over the years. Adamski described the aliens he claimed to have met in the 1950s as human beings from another world, usually light-skinned, light-haired humanoids, who would later be known as Nordic aliens. In his books, Adamski claimed that these alien humans came from Venus, Mars, and other planets in Earth's solar system. However, due to their harsh environmental conditions, none of the planets he mentioned are capable of supporting human life. The first alien Adamski claimed to have met was from Venus, despite the fact that the atmospheric pressure on that planet's surface is 92 times that of Earth, and it has clouds that rain a toxic substance thought to be sulfuric acid. The atmosphere is almost entirely of carbon dioxide, with very little oxygen, and the average surface temperature of Venus is 464 degrees Celsius. In one of his books, Adamski described a trip he took in a flying saucer to the far side of the moon, where he claimed to have seen cities, trees, and snow-capped mountains. He also claimed that the first photographs of the moon's far side, taken by the Soviet lunar probe Luna 3 in 1959, were altered to depict a barren, lifeless surface in order to conceal what he saw. However, all scientific evidence, as well as subsequent lunar missions by American astronauts, demonstrated unequivocally that the entire surface of the Moon is devoid of life and lacks an atmosphere. Adamski claimed in his writings that he traveled to Venus, Mars, and other planets in Earth's solar system, and that they were all capable of supporting humanoid life. Some Adamski partisans insisted that Venus, Mars, Saturn, and the rest were merely code words for planets in other solar systems, there is, however, nothing in Adamski's public writings to support this interpretation and considerable testimony to the contrary. Some critics consider Adamski's 1955 book Inside the Spaceships, which describes his claimed travels through Earth's solar system in a UFO, to be a remake of his 1949 science fiction novel, Pioneers of Space, ghostwritten for Adamski by Lucy McGuinness. It described a fictional journey through the solar system that, according to critics, sounded very similar to Adamski's space travels described in Inside the Spaceships. Adamski's photographs of objects he claimed were UFOs have also been called into question. His widely circulated 1952 photograph depicts an object that has been variously identified as the top of a chicken brooder or a streetlight. J. Pevel Marley, Cecil B. DeMille's top trick photographer, examined Adamski's UFO photos and discovered a spaceman in them, and Marley himself declared that if Adamski's photos were fakes, they were the best he had ever seen. Fourteen experts from the J. Arthur Rank Company in the United Kingdom concluded that the object photographed was either real or a full-scale model. However, in his 1955 investigation into Adamski's claims, James W. mostly interviewed Marley, who stated that he had never enlarged the photos for analysis or found a spaceman in them, and was unaware of anyone else who had. Mostly also spoke with German rocket scientist Walther Johannes Riedel, who said he examined Adamski's UFO photos and discovered them to be forgeries. Riedel informed Mostly that the landing struts of the UFO were actually 100 watt general electric light bulbs, with the round GE logo printed on them. In 2012, UFO researcher Joel Carpenter discovered that the reflector shade of a widely available 1930s pressurized gas lantern was an exact visual match to Adamski's saucer. Mostly discovered additional flaws in Adamski's story during his 1955 investigation. He interviewed several witnesses who claimed to have been with Adamski during his initial meeting with Orthan on November 20, 1952 and discovered that these witnesses contradicted Adamski's claims. One witness, Old Bailey, denied seeing a UFO or the alien Adamski described to Mosley. Gerald Baker, who worked with Adamski at Palomar Gardens, told Mosley that, 
he overheard a tape-recorded account of what was to transpire on the desert, who was to go, etc. several days before Adamski's claimed the 20th of November meeting with Orthan, and Baker stated that Adamski's meeting with Orthan was a planned operation. Baker went on to say that Adamski had tried to persuade him not to expose their hoax by telling him that he could make money by charging fees to give UFO lectures, just like Adamski did. Now you know the UFO image associated with your name is also in the book, Flying Saucers Have Landed. And if people know you're involved with flying saucers, you could do yourself a lot of good. In the evenings, you could give lectures. This is in high demand. You could support yourself by using the picture of yourself in the book. Mostly discovered that, despite his public statements to the contrary, George Hunt Williamson, another prominent contactee and friend of Adamski, did not witness any UFOs or Adamski's encounter with Orthan. When Gerald Baker's wife, Irma Baker, accused him of lying about the incident, Williamson responded cryptically it is sometimes necessary to enter through the back door. Mostly wrote about Adamski in his report, I am convinced that, Adamski's story contains enough flaws, to cast serious doubt on both his veracity and sincerity. The reader will be moved to make a careful re-evaluation of Adamski's book's worth. During the early to mid-1950s, USAF Captain Edward J. Ruppelt led Project Blue Book, the Air Force unit tasked with investigating UFO reports. Captain Ruppelt decided to look into Adamski's UFO claims in 1953. He went to Palomar Mountain in California, dressed in civilian clothes to avoid drawing attention, and attended one of Adamski's lectures in front of a large crowd at his Palomar Gardens Café. Ruppelt came to the conclusion that Adamski was a skilled con artist, whose UFO stories were designed to profit from his gullible followers and listeners, and he compared Adamski to the famous hoaxer, funfair and circus showman P.T. Barnum. Ruppelt described Adamski's speaking style as looking at the man and listening to his story you had an immediate urge to believe him, he was dressed in well-worn, but neat, dungarees. He had graying hair and the most genuine set of eyes I'd ever seen. He spoke softly and naively, almost pathetically, giving the impression that most people think I'm crazy, but honestly, I'm not. According to Ruppelt, Adamski had a strong influence on his audience, you could literally hear the proverbial pin drop in the cafe, as Adamski described his first meeting with Orthon in 1952. When Adamski finished his story, Ruppelt noticed that many of his listeners bought copies of Adamski's UFO photos, which were available for purchase in the cafe. Ruppelt wrote that people shelled out hard cash to hear Adamski's story, at another lecture led by Adamski and other well-known contactees. Ruppelt was convinced the common thread running through many of these contactee stories, is utopia. There is no illness on these other worlds because they have discovered how to cure all diseases. There are no wars because they have learned to live peacefully. There is no poverty because everyone has everything they desire. They have discovered the secret of eternal life, so there is no such thing as old age. Too often, this subtle pitch can be reduced to, step forward, and make a contribution to the pot. I'm just about to learn the spaceman's secrets, and if you give me a little money to finish my work, I'll give you the secret. By 1960, Adamski's UFO lectures, particularly his first two books, had made him a wealthy man, according to Ruppelt. His hamburger stand is boarded up, and he now lives in a big ranch house. He spends his vacations in Mexico and employs his own clerical staff. His two books, Flying Saucers Have Landed and Inside the Spaceships, have sold 200,000 copies worldwide and have been translated into every language except Russian. By 1960, two beautiful spacewomen claiming to be Nordic aliens were dating Adamski, a blonde from Saturn named Kalna and another woman named Ilmuth. 